Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful morning we have here today. But before we begin with our service, we will take for the next five minutes a time to pray for you. If you need prayer for yourself or your family members, just put it in our chat box in our try. We will try to pray for them as soon as we can. The Bible says in Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits, who forgives all of your iniquity and heals all your diseases. Together with me is one of our victory group leader, Jello Gadia, to help us pray for everyone. Why don't we begin with a word of prayer right now? Lord, I am so thankful, God, that one of the benefits we can get from you, Lord, is that we can receive your forgiveness and your healing, Lord God. I am declaring, Father God, that body, soul, and spirit, God, will be upon everyone as we look to you as Jehovah Rapha. We are thankful, Lord God, if we are needing of your healing, Lord, your word says that it is, Lord, our benefit that we can claim, God, because you, Lord God, is a miracle worker. Whether this would be COVID-related or not COVID-related, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed in Jesus' name. Jello? Yes, we agree with that prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we also want to pray for comfort. Comfort in the suffering. Uh, we ask you to lend your hand to each and every healers or every doctors. Uh, that's everyone that's helping us. Uh, in this COVID uh, pandemic situation. Use your blessings to be a means to a cure. Give confidence to those who are in the front lines and give us the grace so that even though that if we are afraid, we know that we have a God that we can trust and that is you, Lord. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord, Lord. we also want to pray uh, for Eva. Uh, she's praying for... Uh, Mr. Ramon Arihalo, Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray uh, that you bring comfort. Lord, uh, help uh, Kuya Ramon uh, that is suffering from cancer right now. Give the grace. Give him the life. Give him this opportunity to come to you, God, so that to give him comfort, God. Uh, I know that it's really, really hard to go over with cancer. We also want to pray for yes. uh, Nana Rosita. We, pr uh, we pray for healing and we pray for strength as well or we also want to pray for the complete healing of the agulto family uh, yes, as well lord we want to pray for everyone right now that is suffering we know that this situation it's been two years it's really been very very hard for each and everyone but we know god that we could uh give our complete trust to you in all this uh struggles that we have in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen father we receive lord god your healing touch whether this would be physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing, relational healing, whatever kind of healing, Lord, you can make us whole again. And maybe we're experiencing brokenness, Father. We believe, Lord God, that the stripes of Jesus Christ can make us whole once again, Father God. Lord, thank you. Healing is always your will for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. How many of you are ready for our online worship service? Yes. I'd like to call back our Victory Group leader, Jello Gadia, to pray for us in our worship service. Good morning, church. I know it's another, it's another week, another exciting uh, morning for us. So let me encourage you uh, from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 16. It says here, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Uh, this was the time that when Paul has uh, written this to the people of Colossians and how we can live our lives in this new life within, uh, with Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Thank you. Thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you for being our guide. Thank you for being the counsel. Thank you for giving us that joy, the joy in our heart, 
being the author of our hope, the object of our love, we come to you with uh, seeking refreshment and peace. You have shown us mercy, your grace, and you have released, relieved us from our fears and anxieties. Lord, grant us the mind and an expectant heart that by the assurance of your presence, that as we worship you this morning, we can abide in you. We can give our trust in you and that we can be expectant that you, God, will always be in our hearts. Lord, we lift up everything to you in this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen and amen. Church, I know you're excited. Let us come and worship the Lord. For the grace that is overflowing, so for your for mercies, your mercies and every morning, morning, we worship, we worship you, God. God. We worship, worship you, Lord. Come on, let's come on, sing this again. This is the day of the beginnings. The old is passing. The change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing. Your word is true and you will never, ever fail. Your presence will lead us. This is the day of the beginnings. The old is passing. Oh, change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing. Your word is true, and you will never, ever fail. Your presence will lead us all. Providing in the desert is God filling our souls with living waters. You light in the night with holy fire. Whoa.
God that we have. You deserve the praises. You deserve the honor. And you said in your word that anything we ask in your name, O Jesus, you will do it. That's why we are privileged to be here worshiping a great God, worshiping a gracious God. Even in our own homes, as we lift up our hands, declaring that God is with us today. God is with us to answer our prayers. God is with us to journey in our challenges that we are facing today. God is with us in rejoicing. God is with us in the breakthroughs that we are receiving. Salamat Panginoon, nakasama ka namin in the lowest, in the highest times of our lives. That's why you deserve all the glory, honor, and praises in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give Him praise. Those who are joining us online, can you give us a heart reaction? And this is Victory, and we welcome all of you. And as a church, we exist for two reasons. That is to honor God and make disciples. And we can continue to do make disciples by sharing this live stream to our friends and families, sa ating mga group chats, and even by sharing this in our own timelines. So please do that and even tag your friends and families in the comment section as well. And also, as a church, uh, we, we reach out to the next generation because that is our heart, that is the core of who we are. And we believe that last year, God made 
many opportunities for us to continue in our calling and for us to know we expanded our reach to reach also the younger or elementary level with the help of the Kids Church Ministry because one of our campus missionary is help, is our uh, heading or leading our Kids Church and also in partnership with Child's Future Guided Academy, we started reaching out to the younger or elementary levels in that campus. Also, we had the opportunity to reach out to the new campuses, especially in an honest area. We had TIP, WCC, and Kirino High School. And we are not just also serving the students, but also the educators and the, those who are leading the campuses. That's why we had this, what we call Teachers Retreat, entitled Boss, to serve our educators as well. And one of the milestones that uh, we had last year is that we had our on-site youth service here in Eton Centuries. And that's a glimpse of what God is about to do in our campus ministry as well. We believe that one day we can meet the students again in the campuses. Pag nagbalik na po yung mga face-to-face -face classes at pag nakapag on-site youth service na po, ang sarap lang po makita yung bawat kabataan na nag worship and declaring that God is with them as well. Also, fulfilling the purposes God has for them. So today, let's watch this video as we look at what happened in our campus ministry last year. Even when the campuses remained closed in 2021, doors of the gospel continually opened in our midst. Here are the highlights of God's power at work in the lives of our students. Through technology, we held outreach events that inspired many students to share the gospel beyond physical limitations. These events were joint efforts between schools, campus missionaries, and students themselves. Last August 2021, we gathered students across the nation to worship, pray, and encourage one another to pursue God's calling and purpose for their lives. It's inspiring to see next generation leaders rise to the challenge and lead fellow students to the faith. Over 900 students were baptized in water last year alone. We've seen homes and families encounter Jesus together. We've also seen student leaders serve the community in a time of great need. While our world is recovering from a crisis, the next generation is continually being used by God, empowered by His Spirit to be His hands and feet. As his schools and universities reopen, we are excited to bring catalytic change to expand our reach in every campus. Thank you for empowering our next generation to rise above its challenge. Your partnership inspires their faith and fuels their passion to change the campus and change the world. On behalf of Every Nation Campus, we thank all of you for your continuous support and prayer in our ministry efforts. And we believe that this year is another year, an opportunity for us to change the campus and change the world. So thank you for rallying this with all of us. So as we continue to worship God this time in the area of our tithes and our offering, let me call on Pastor Jay. Thank you very much, Doyle. And this time, let us continue to worship the Lord with our giving. I'd like to share with you, encourage you with this verse coming from Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 to 8, and this is the NIV. It says here, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. We all know that the good news is that Jesus offered his life to us in order to save us from our sins. That's the good news of salvation that we can freely receive by faith. Add to that, Jesus also instructed his disciples to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. The disciples received these spiritual gifts freely, and so they gave these freely as well. Just as Jesus reminded the disciples and even us today, the kingdom of heaven will continue to advance, and we can take part of it by proclaiming the gospel and even demonstrating our generosity to others. 
May the kingdom of God continually expand through the gospel proclamation as we generously participate through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of salvation. As you have freely given us, help us to be in faith to freely give as well. May we continue to be emboldened by the power of your Holy Spirit in proclaiming the gospel and demonstrating generosity to others as you continue to bless us generously as well. Receive our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Our center is open from uh, is open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday to receive your tithes and offerings. However, to make it easy and safer for everyone, we encourage you to give online via direct deposit. The details are being flashed in your screen. By GCash, you may scan the QR code that's on your screen. And also you can visit victory.org.ph slash give. Options to give to missions, every nation, campus, and real life are easily available online. God bless you as you give today. What a wonderful and amazing morning we have today. And we are so grateful that God has given us a brand new week, a sunny day for all of us to celebrate His goodness and His faithfulness. Kamusta naman po kayo lahat dyan? Uh, type naman po kayo sa ating online um, chat box. And uh, I just wanted to find out how everyone is doing. And I also wanted to greet some of the friends that I've invited. I actually see Carl, Carl Bona. Uh, I'll see you later on, Carl. We will be having our Zoom meeting. And Carl is going to be uh, married uh, next week. Okay, excited tayo dyan, Carl. We also wanted to greet uh, Ver, Ver De Leos, who's also watching us. Ver, namiss ka na kita, bro. And uh, if you are here, so Jordan Molina says, uh, Okay naman po kami. Happy Sunday po. Okay, I'm okay po. Why mean Victoria says, Jose Marie Derek, kamusta ka na, bro? Good morning, Pastor. And then Mommy Bird says here, All good by God's grace po. Ina says, Gandang umaga po, Pastor Noel. Neri Azurin, continue to bless your family. And I pray that the Lord is going to be your strength and your shield. Okay, so Marite says, Happy Sunday. Okay naman po kami. Des Garcia, praise God for the gift of life. Yes, that is what we wanted to celebrate today. And we believe that through um, the Holy Spirit, God's work is going to be um, different in our lives, even if there may be some obstacles or challenges along the way. Good morning once again. My name is Noel Nanez, and I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Quezon Avenue. And this is our 9 a.m. online worship service. To begin with the preaching of the Word, I'd like for everyone to, uh, whether you're at home or whether you're in your office or whether you're out doing your grocery shopping, I'd like for you just to pause and stand up for a few minutes in order for us to read the Word of God in reverence to the Word of God. And let me read to you John chapter 6, verse 57 up to 69. It says here, As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, this is hard teaching. This is hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. 
the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who those people who did not believe and who was it who would later on betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by my Father in heaven. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? But look at the response of Simon Peter. He answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. May the Lord our God anoint the preaching of His Word. Let the Holy Spirit do His work and His ministry as He allows us to see the truth and the beauty and the power of His Word. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that You are the true bread from heaven, that we can always run to You, God, and have our fill, be content, and be satisfied. In the comforts of our homes, Holy Spirit, would You visit us and enlighten God's Word for all of us. Anoint the preaching of Your Word, Holy Spirit, And here I am, a vessel that you can use, Lord, to proclaim your word to everyone listening to this preaching. B, take your rightful place, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You may take your seats now. All right, as I mentioned, we are on our series entitled Abide. And by the way, I just wanted to remind everyone, at the end of the preaching, we will also be partaking of communion. So therefore, I'd like for you to prepare your cracker, your bread, or your cup of juice in order for us to partake of communion. Today, we are on our third week on the series entitled Abide. We've been uh, talking about this since the time of our, uh, since the beginning of the year, and even the same theme in our prayer, fasting, and consecration. But when you talk about abide, what does abide really mean? It actually talks about comply with, obey, observe, follow, to keep on, to hold on, to conform to, to adhere, to stick to, to stand by, or to act in accordance with uphold, to take heed and pay attention to, to agree to or with, to consent, to accede, to accept and acquiesce in. Many of these words in the word uh, are, are, are actually de- describing the word abide. But I pray that it is the Holy Spirit who will actually give us our own definition on what it means to abide in the, in the Lord and in the power of His word. So that is why when we talk about abide, we are believing that the Holy Spirit will help us guide. He will will help us be in step with Him every single day of our lives. But the real question is, what does abiding in Christ mean? There are four things that I would want to share to you before we would even look at His Word. But we talk about abiding in Christ, it actually means our mind is actually full of His Word. We are reading the Bible, we are memorizing it, but at the same time, we are also meditating on the Word using our very mind. What does abiding in Christ mean? Our will is governed by His Word. In short, yes, we are motivated to do, to plan, to have our faith goals, but ultimately, it is not our will, but God's will be done. Can you say amen? That is what it means to abide. Next, number three, to abide in Christ means our desire is transformed by His Word. Remember, the Bible says, delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. So every time I am reading God's Word, every time I look at the beauty and the power of God's Word, I know for sure that God, you are changing my desire. You are transforming me and making it aligned to the Word and to your will. Finally, when you talk about abide in Christ, our action is motivated by His Word. 
So most definitely, when you look at the word abide, it actually transforms. It's holistic. It is generally our whole being is abiding in Christ. Remember Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So therefore, when you talk about abiding, it's holistically following Jesus, complying with His Word, living in accordance to what the Lord Jesus Christ would wanted us to accomplish. So there you go. I hope that this would make a clear difference a big difference and a clearer understanding of why we ought to abide in the Lord and in the power of His Word. Today, we will be focusing on the Word that feeds our spirit. To be, to be honest, when you look at this particular phrase or this particular statement, it may not um, seem to connect right away. Why is it? Because how can the Word feed our spirit? How can our spirit be actually, actually be fed? So therefore, with all of this seemingly disconnect thought that Jesus would want to convey to the people he was talking to, it may not also be as clear to everyone apart from the enlightenment and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it that every time we walk in the Lord, every time we read the Bible, there are many things in the Bible that we may not be able to understand completely. Tama po ba? Remember when you go and read the book of Genesis, it was exciting to read Genesis. It was exciting to read the book of Exodus. But when you go to the, the book of Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, alam mo parang nakakapagod na ito, hindi ko na maintindihan ito. Kinatulugan mo na. Now, how many of you believe here that the Word of God is living and active? Every time I read the Word of God, it gives new life. It gives new meaning. And even if I've already read that verse in the past, and I revisit it again and read it again, it may have a different meaning and application in my life. Next ministry po ba yon? Because definitely, the Word of God is living and it's active and it is feeding our spirit. When was the last time that you were able to feed your spirit? Again, as we look at the verse that we read a while ago, there is seemingly a disconnect between what Jesus wanted to convey to his listeners and the people wanted to understand what Jesus is saying. So therefore, what we will look today in the preaching of God's Word is understanding the biblical message conveyed by Jesus that we need to discern. But obviously, we all understand that our, dis, uh, our understanding is so limited. So therefore, the discernment is not coming from us. Humanly speaking, it is impossible for us to discern God's Word based on our wisdom. We would rely on the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Number one, the first biblical message that Jesus Christ wanted to convey to everyone and it is not about the physical, but about the spiritual. Why was he talking about this? Remember, the world that we are living in is but temporary. Lahat po na nakikita natin dito sa mundong ibabo na ito, hindi po ito pang matagalan. Including COVID-19 pandemic, Yes, we are going through this, but my faith declares this is temporary, Lord. Do you believe that? So therefore, if we are so overwhelmed by the pandemic, be assured that this isn't it. It is but temporary. It is not about the physical, but it's about the spiritual. Maybe you're going through some tough situation in your life because of these times. Or whether, bago pa man nagkaroon ng pandemic, meron ka ng pinagdadaanan, remember, it is not about the physical, but it's about the spiritual. What did Jesus Christ say to the people? As the living Father sent me, 
I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. Now, this particular truth may not, may, may not be easily understood because when you hear the words, feed on me, he will live, it is also found in verse 58. It says, this is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Now, Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. In short, it wasn't in the wilderness that Jesus was trying to preach the word. It was in the synagogue. It is when people were trying to listen and hear the word of God. But how many of you know that the people back then could not understand what Jesus Christ was saying? Which actually means that even if I've been a Christian for a long time, there are still truths and doctrines that I may not be able to understand. Why? Because I have a limited way of understanding. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is so relevant in my walk with Him so that He will enlighten, He would teach me, He would help me, He would empower me to live my life for Jesus Christ. The, 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 the phrase, the truth that Jesus said, feed on Him and live forever. Sa totoo lang, pag nakita po natin yung salitang o yung, yung sinabi ni Jesus na feed on Him, and live forever. Feed on Him? What does this mean? Look at the next slide. It says, feed on Him and live forever. Now, this is not easily understood if I'm looking at it from my own perspective. Feed on Him and live forever. I'm trying to be one of those people that Jesus Christ was conversing with. He said, feed on me and live forever. You see, this graphic imagery about eating Jesus' flesh and drinking His blood can be gross and puzzling at times. In our next slide, it says that it could be gross and puzzling. Imagine mo, you will be eating on Jesus' flesh. Ew! Drinking His blood. Ew! And it could also be puzzling at first. Cons considering this, the context is essential and necessary to help us understand what Jesus is trying to say. Let us consider what Jesus said and did in the entire chapter to give us a clearer context. Let's revisit the slide. Let's look at the clearer context because you will not be able to see this unless you look at the entire context. The entire context of the chapter begins with the feeding of the 5,000. Next slide with about five barley loaves and two fish. And he was even talking about manna from heaven eaten by their forefathers in the desert. In short, when the Israelites were trying to go back to Jesus, after the multiplication of the barley loaves and the fish, Jesus tried to retreat himself and he communed, he communed with his heavenly father. Which is so distinct about Jesus that before or after any kind of ministry that he did, he would always go back and commune with God. He was in step and abiding with the Father. Kung si Jesus Christ po ganon, then we call ourselves followers of Jesus, then we ought to do as what he is doing. He was communing with the Father. So the disciples then, or those who have been recipients of the multiplication of the bread, they were looking for Jesus. And maybe natunaw na yung kanilang kinain, they probably wanted to have another fill. 
So therefore, they were looking for Jesus, not for the purpose of looking for Him, but they have a different perspective. They have a different motivation. So when Jesus saw them, they under, He understood that you are not looking for me because you wanted, to, you wanted me, but you're looking for me because you wanted to eat your fill once again. And that is where He was telling them, it isn't about the natural filling of your stomach, but it's about the feeding of your spirit. Kaya po tayo ng five days of prayer, fasting, and consecration because it isn't about our stomach being fed, but it's about our spirit being fed by God, abiding in the Lord and in the power of His Word. But the disciples were not there yet. They were still come reasoning with Jesus based on the past. Kaya sabi niya, our forefathers were given manna. Remember, sabi ni Jesus, bread from heaven. But the only reference that they can think of was the manna that their forefathers have when they were in the wilderness. But Jesus said, it isn't just the manna because it is still in the physical, but Jesus was trying to connect with them, not the physical, but the spiritual. It's about the true bread from heaven. Because abiding in Jesus and in His Word is metaphorically speak, spoken as feeding on Him. Kaya sabi niya, feed on me and live forever. Our next slide says, abiding in Jesus and His Word which is metaphorically speaking that He had to feed on Him and promises to give us life. Are we here? Next is that as God gave manna from heaven for those who wandered in the desert, God gives us the true bread from heaven who is Jesus and that is the one that feeds our spirit. It's in order for us to live out the essence of life. Many times, we feed our minds with a lot of news. Yes, you know, me and my wife, you know, we watch the presidential interviews. And it is feeding, you know, how I will choose wisely the president that will lead our nation for the next years. And that is all that we do at times. Feeding with books, feeding with news. I have no problem with that. But we have to feed on His Word because through this, our spirit is going to be nourished. Are we here? Because it isn't about the physical, but it's about the spiritual. The second biblical message that Jesus tried to convey to the disciples that who were listening to Him, it is not discerned by one's own mind, but by the Spirit. Kahit ganok tayo katalino, hindi pa rin po natin maintindihan completely what the Lord wanted us to do. Are we here? Isn't that there are moments wherein God would want you to do something, but you would say to Him, Lord, bakit? Hindi ko maintindihan. Ba't ako magbibigay? Eh, ako nga ang, ang may, may, may need ng finances. Why do I have to give my tithes? Or Lord, why do I have to pray for the sick? Eh ako nga mismo, Lord, I need the encouragement. I need prayer. You see, church, there are many things that is not discernible in our own minds. That is why it's important the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, helps us understand God's will for our lives. Let's look at the verse that, we, that, the, that the disciples then, when they were presented with truths about Jesus. Verse 60 says, When many of His disciples heard it, they said, This is hard saying. Now, how many of us believe that this could also be what we, in, when, when, every time we look at the, His Word, we may not be able to comprehend it easily. It's hard saying, God. Who can listen to it? 
But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Verse 64, But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. I'm here to tell everyone that we may not be able to fully comprehend our journey as a Christian. Because when our reasoning ability ends and our intelligence ends, that is where faith and obedience comes in. That is where abiding the Lord comes in. Remember Abraham? God told him to sacrifice her son. Hello? I couldn't even imagine doing that for my own children. It does not connect, Lord. This is hard saying, God. Now, when was the last time God is telling you to do something that is seemingly hard to do? You know why? Because this is not about doing it or reasoning it with your own mind, but it's about relying on the power of the Holy Spirit who will enlighten us with His Word. It may not connect right now, but one day it will because we are abiding in the Holy Spirit. You, know, you see, Jesus Christ was trying to address the disconnect. People were talking about, Jesus was looking at the short-sightedness of the people he was trying to say. Bakit kamo? Because they were still in the bread, the multiplication of the bread. They were short-sighted. They wanted to have another fill of the bread, of the barley loaves. And that is why Jesus was saying, Alam ko naman na hindi ako inahanap ninyo. Ang inahanap ninyo kung kailan kayo kakain ulit ng tinapay. But Jesus trying to talk to them not about being short-sighted, but about having the eternal perspective. Jesus was trying to talk to them not about the past, because the people then were trying to reason from Jesus what the disciple, what the Israelites then, their forefathers, experienced in the desert. And at times, you know, kapag uh, masyado tayong um, 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 con um, convinced with what's happening right now, and we are still living in our past, it could be a deterrent to us moving on by faith in the Lord Jesus. He was trying to talk to them about eternal perspective. When was the last time we were actually storing up our wealth in heaven where moth will not destroy and rust will not destroy? When was the last time we are storing up in heaven? The world that we are living in is but temporary. But spiritually speaking, that is eternal life for all of us. And it is for all eternity. Next was Jesus was trying to talk to them, not just about the food that perishes, but the food that endures to eternal life. And that is Him. That is abiding in the Lord and the power of His Word. As Jesus is the true bread that feeds our spirit, Understanding its essential truth is through the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Which brings us to the third biblical message that Jesus wanted to convey. It is not about temporary life, but eternal life. The third point in our next slide. Not about temporary life, but eternal life. We may be so consumed with what is currently happening in this life. It's temporary again. Give us, Lord God, a perspective of what is truly life in eternity. Jesus said in verse 62 and 63, Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where He was before? 
It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words I have spoken to you are life and spirit. It is the Word that gives us life, gives us new meaning in life. Verse 65, it even, he even said, he said this, why I, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. What Jesus Christ's message was, you see, the people were still in the natural. And the very reason why there is a disconnect, because it's not in the natural, but it's in the supernatural. It's a big difference about being born and being born again. I had a, uh, a, a talk with, with, with my daughter, and she asked me one time, Dad, what does it mean to be born again? You mean that I will be born again? And I was reminded by the Holy Spirit about Nicodemus, who asked Jesus, is it necessary for a man to be born again? And I spoke to my daughter, you see, sweetheart, when you are born, you are born in this world, flesh. But when you are born again, you are not born in the flesh, but you are born again in the spirit. And I told her, remember the time, sweetheart, that I gave you your sinner's prayer when you were younger and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And she said, yes, Dad, that is being born again. Because it isn't about the natural, the temporary life, but it's about the eternal life. And she said to me, yeah, okay, Dad, I understand. You see, if a, if a 10-year-old child can understand this, how much more you? You don't need to be a theological degree holder to understand what Jesus is trying to convey, but you just need to be reliant on the Holy Spirit. Let Him give us the new life. Let Him give us enlightenment. Jesus is talking to you right now and visiting you as you ask Him, Lord, enlighten my eyes that I may see not just the temporary but the eternal. Amen? As a response to those who rejected Him and grumbled at His words, Jesus even made more metaphoric teaching more powerful and stronger with meaning. He did not back down from the truth that He is the bread of life that feeds our spirits. In fact, Jesus made this discourse even stronger by saying that the Father, as He wills, allows us to be drawn to Jesus and grants the Spirit to give us life. Jesus continually calls us to put our heart and focus on spiritual realities that matter for eternity. There you go. I believe that the Father is granting access to those He wants to receive Him in the Spirit. Being born again is not just a, a concept that we can look at. It's a relationship that we have with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful that, Lord God, you had given me that opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ. And therefore, as I know Jesus, I have to continue feeding on His Word. Finally, what is the biblical message Jesus tried to convey for all of us? It's not about turning away from Him but it's about abiding in Him. There are moments wherein we will not understand, but does that mean that we have to stop following Jesus? I don't think so. There may be some moments wherein it is hard, Lord God, because of the many problems that I'm going through. 
Kaya nga tayo mag abide kay Jesus because you have several problems that you are facing in life. It is not about turning away from Jesus, but using your circumstances to say, God, I'm going through some tough situation, Lord, and that is why I want to abide in you, Father God. Verse 66 says, After this, many of these disciples turned back and no longer walked with Him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Jesus knew their hearts. You know what? The whole world is going through this pandemic. The whole world is experiencing hardships and obstacles. But that will not mean that we have to turn our backs away from Jesus. Ito na naman, may bagong surge na naman, may bagong variant na naman, kakapagod na ito. Does that mean that I have to stop following Jesus? I don't think so. But I'm going to use whatever the circumstance is and ask God, Lord, would you give me the grace, God, to continue following you? Yes, it's a new surge. Yes, it's a new challenge in the new year, God. But I pray that I will have a fresh spirit, a fresh faith, and a fresh fire as I continue to abide in you. Look at how Jesus asked this to his disciples. And Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Ye have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. There are two types of people that Jesus was trying to talk here. The ones who have yet to understand the spiritual matters that Jesus Christ was trying to convey. And the ones, the disciples of Jesus Christ who have been abiding with Him. And He would say, keep your faith stronger. Because I believe as we all became born again, we continue to abide in Jesus. Because Jesus is the true bread of heaven. Whoever feeds on him by feeding on his words will live. For his words are spirit and life and are the words of eternal life. That is exactly what Peter said to Jesus. You have the words of eternal life. Titigil pa ba ako, Lord, and na-encounter na kita? As the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now that I've tasted that the Lord is good, I continue to abide in Him. There are two types of people I wanted to pray for. Number one is those who are probably going through that situation in your life and yet you have never encountered the truth about Jesus Christ. I believe today the Lord God Almighty will grant access to you in order for you to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. If you want to do that, let me lead you into prayer and say, Father God, thank you for not letting go of me. I know today that life is hard and difficult, God. But I am reliant on you. Today, I want to have a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. I want to turn away from all my sins and from everything that the Bible calls sin. I look to you, Jesus, and I receive the gift of eternal life by faith. I acknowledge that you are my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for writing my name in your book of life. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, our victory group leaders are ready and they're on a standby. If you want to have someone journey in faith with you, they're introducing themselves online right now. Can you go and connect with them? And they're glad to connect with you likewise. The second type of people I wanted to pray for are those who already have the relationship 
with Jesus Christ. As Peter mentioned, we believe, Lord. You have the words of eternal life. Therefore, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to turn away. Times may seem to be hard. The Bible says, in this life, you will have many troubles. As Christians, we will not be exempted from any kind of hardship. And that is why I wanted to pray for you. If you're going through such difficulties in your life right now, and seemingly, God, napanghinaan po ako ng loob because of what I'm going through. Continue to abide in Jesus. He has the words of eternal life for you. If that is you, and you want to be strengthened by the Lord Jesus because of the many instances in your life that shakes your faith, pray this prayer and say, Father God, I don't want to turn away from you, God. But all the more, using my circumstance as a platform to run to you. Help me continue to abide in you, God. Though it is hard, though it is not easily or easily comprehensible, Father, God, help me through your Spirit abide in you. For those people, Lord God, who may be going through those challenging situations, I am praying, God, that you will give them the grace, empower them with the Spirit, Lord, that they will be strengthened in their faith as they journey their lives, Lord. Thank you for abiding in us as we abide in you. We will be partaking of communion today. And I would just like for you to prepare your communion elements. This is one of the things that Jesus Christ wanted us to do. Partake of communion. Feed on Him. And that we will live. Let me read for everyone here as we partake of communion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says here, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's hold on to our communion element, our cracker, or our bread, and let's pray. Father God, you said in your word, to feed on Jesus that we may live. This bread, Lord, that we are holding is symbolic of your body on that cross. Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the penalty for our sins. It is your body nailed on the cross that took the punishment that we all deserve. Partaking of this bread is commemorating what you did for all of us at the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the bread right now. Let's continue to read from verse 25. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's hold on to our cup of juice right now. Lord Jesus, as we are drinking and partaking from the cup. It reminds us, God, of your blood shed on the cross. It is your blood, God, that has forgiven and shed all our sins. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us our sins 
and for making us white as snow once again. We'll be forever grateful in Jesus' name. Let's partake from the cup. Lord Jesus, teach us to continue to abide in you. Our journey, God, is yet to be over. We may not be seeing the finish line yet, God, but give us the perseverance and the endurance to fix our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. Help us to abide in you and in the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't we all just end by worshiping the Lord our God. And as we worship, let the Holy Spirit strengthen every one of us as we journey our lives with Him. Can we all do that? Let's worship the Lord. Troubles won't last, but the Word of God is living and active, one that will last forever. So it is very important who we should be abiding with. A guarantee is when we abide in Jesus, whatever our circumstances and troubles today, we know that the Word of God will direct our lives to overcome trying situations and be victorious because God's Word gives life. Amen? Let us pray. Lord, as we abide in your word, let it be true. As we live it out in our thoughts, desires, and deeds. As we obey, Lord, use us to draw others closer to you too. Receive the Lord's blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We'll see you again next week. God bless you all.